Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair, and today we're going to talk about reference designators. What's a reference designator, Justin? What is a reference designator? Well, this one's going to be a very, very ultra simple concept, but I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more to it. That way, if you're already pretty experienced with schematics, then you could also get something out of this video. So let's just jump right in, take a look at the schematic here. All right, so like I said, this is going to be kind of a two-parter. It's not, again, it's not going to be a really long one just because this is a pretty simple concept, but I do believe that new and experienced users alike will be able to get something out of this video. So what is a reference designator? A reference designator is the designation of a component on the board. It is how to tell what a component is. Okay, so as an example here, if we look over, we see C3710, okay? That right there is the actual reference designator itself, okay? But it's broken down into two separate parts, okay? The first part would be the, the letter itself, which would designate what type of component it is, and then the second half, the number, would designate basically the number of that on the board. Now, that doesn't mean that there's you know almost 4,000 of this component on here. It's just the designation given by the engineer who designed this board, okay? So, right here, C3710, okay? That would be capacitor, it's got a C, so capacitor 3710. Now, again, this is a very, very simple concept. It doesn't need a lot of explaining, but there are quite a few different reference designators that you have to learn okay which will be definitely down here in the description there'll be a link you'll be able to look up all the ones you need to look up no worries on that okay so let's go ahead and just take a look at a couple more just for fun here look at that we've got D3701 okay so the first half or no, I guess not the first half the first part the the letter portion would be what type of component it is we have a D that stands for diode and then again we have 3701 the number after it which is the actual component designation that is the unique component identifier itself so you're looking for diode 3701 okay um, we can move up we can see that this IC right here which is designated by a U which you know in your brain you're thinking well why doesn't it say like IC or chip or something like that this stuff was set up by a standards organization this is not something that I made up. So I couldn't tell you why they used a U, but they have, and they have for a long time, and it works. So we've got U, we've got C, we've got L. Well, that's a fun one. What does that mean? L, that stands for inductor, okay? Now, let's see. I think we've got the idea of what an actual reference designator is at this point. And like I said, down in the description, there will be a list of all the different reference designators that you're probably going to find on these boards. Um, not everyone is available straight up. You may have to do a little searching, but they do exist. Okay. Now, I said that I was going to show you something that maybe not a lot of people knew. Okay. And I think this one's a big help because, you know, you start to understand what a reference designator is, and then you come across some things on the board that completely blow your mind. Okay. So, if we take a look closer at, let's say, let's go back to the capacitor here. C3710, okay? Now, this is a capacitor. What are capacitors measured in? They're measured in farads, okay? So this one right here, you can see that it's actually measured in farads. It's got the measurement under it, okay? But this one's kind of confusing for a lot of people because you'll be roaming around, you'll be looking at your schematics, and you're gonna come across something like this. Let me go ahead and show you here. Um, let's zoom in. Now, just take a look at this for a minute and go ahead and get confused because even if you know how to read schematics and even if you're doing board level diagnosis, something like this, if you came across it, might thoroughly confuse you, okay? Why? Because right up here, we have R, 6711RF. R, what's R mean? Well, R means resistor, okay? But the specifications under it show that it's measured in picofarads. Well, that's weird. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe this is just maybe this is just a mistake. Maybe this is just a mistake. I assure you it's not. Let's go down one more component. 
C6729RF. Okay, we got a capacitor. We just looked at one, and it was measured in farads. But this one's measured in henrys. You, I don't understand. I don't get it. Like, what's going on here? This, this makes everything you just said mean nothing because I'm seeing something that starts with something that means something else attached to a totally different spec sheet. Now, the reason you're seeing something like this is because if you see at the end of this component, it has an RF under it, okay? This is radio frequency, meaning it's part of a radio frequency circuit, meaning it, it deals with, you know, outside variables, okay? Now, that really doesn't have too much to do with this except for the fact that every board, while being designed, is all theory, okay? No matter what you say, no matter what you do, when you design a board that has to deal with like radio frequency, anything like that, it's it's all theory until tested, correct? Okay, well, if that holds true, then what we're seeing here is that they designed the board and they originally put resistors right here and a capacitor down here. But during the tuning phase of the board, after it was actually produced and they were running the tests on it, they realized, hey, these components don't quite work here. They don't, they don't fit right, okay? But that doesn't mean that we can't replace that component with something else in the exact same location and get the effects that we wanted, okay? So what we need to do in these situations where you see a reference designated component that doesn't quite match up with the spec sheet, you always go with the specs, okay? So at this point, we would look at this and we'd look down and we'd see that this is measured in picofarads, okay? Well, that is a freaking capacitor, okay? That is not a resistor. You do not have a resistor right here. Now, it may still be named R6711RF on the board and in your board view, but it is not gonna be a resistor, okay? They, they made these changes after the schematic was completed and they just went in real quick and you know, kind of, kind of changed it up a little bit. But they already sent the stuff out, and it's kind of already locked in place. Okay, and that's the only real logic that I can get from it, and from talking a couple to a couple other engineers about this kind of situation. Because believe me, at one point I was very confused about this as well. I'm just, you know, I'm rolling through some schematics, and you know, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, what? What is this? I, I literally had to you know, make a couple phone calls on this one to ask about this. I was just like, I, I don't understand. You know, why are they like this when they have a reference designator that shows there's something else, okay? So I hope that sheds a little bit of light on what reference designators are and how to identify what a component actually is when you come across something that doesn't quite feel right. So hey, I really hope you learned something today. In fact, if you uh, liked the video, go and hit right over down there and hit the like button. And if you're not already subscribed and you wanna start checking out all my stuff weekly, just head on over to the other side and hit subscribe. Now, if you are super about it and you wanna learn everything that I'm trying to teach, whoop, boom, hit that notification bell, all right? It's really important. That way, every single time I upload something, it pops up right on your phone, your computer, whatever you're doing, all right? And hey, check it out. Maybe you have an opinion about what I'm doing right now. Or maybe you even used my technique on a repair and it worked for you. If any of these things apply to you, or maybe you just want to say hi, hit me up with a comment. I love them. Seriously, I love the comments. They're my favorite. Every time I get one on my phone, I'm like, oh yeah. And if you are one of those people that is about to look me up on Instagram um, to ask me what equipment I use, well, guess what? I already got you. Don't even worry about it. Hit the description, boom, right down at the bottom has everything in a big old list. If there's something that I didn't put on there, then hit me up on Instagram, the phone god, check out my stuff, then hit me up and let me know what you need. And don't forget, I'm Justin, and this is The Art of Repair.